Welcome back to Clearwater, Minnesota for the Preserve Championship, powered by Prodigy Disc. This is another DGPT Elite Series event for the 2023 season, and I'm very proud to cover it in the booth. I'm Andrew Fish, along with Nathan Queen. Yeah, and happy to be out here in Clearwater, Minnesota. What a great first two rounds that we've been treated to with lots of birdies and just lots of scoring, fun shots to watch, fun putts to see go in. And um, I imagine we're going to have that again here today with Garrett Gerthy, James Proctor, Evan Scott, and Emerson Keith all looking to make a push towards that podium position. Yeah, we've seen most of these folks on gatekeeper coverage uh, this year. Evan Scott going to be one of the newcomers to our card. If you haven't heard of him yet, he's a he's a great talent and the other others familiar faces to everybody, really. Yeah, Garrett Gerthy been around quite a while on the Pro Tour, putting with the KC Pro AVRs. Really likes the Color Glow Rock 3 for his mid-range shots. T-Bird, Firebird, Wraith, possibly some Destroyer Emperor out here as well. We saw James Proctor yesterday in round two, putting with the Glow P-Blend Alpaca. Going to throw the Pathfinder, Barry, a couple other mid-ranges in there. And then Centurion for his uh, fairway drivers, some destroyers and others for his distance. Then Evan Scott, Discraft player, going to be putting with the Hard Putter Plastic Roach, throw some buzzes. I'm sure we'll see that Z Raptor on some sidearms and maybe a Tsunami or Scorch uh, forces as well. Emerson Keith putting with the Blue Bonnet, a couple different mid ranges in the bag and likes to re- lean on some overstable stuff as he has a good forehand-backhand combo. Look for those mix of bayonets. And here we are at hole one again to lead off your round, 708-foot par four, pumping about 400 feet off of the tee, uh, or even 500. You're gonna have a pretty straight look at this pin. Just get in between these trees right over the OB water carry. Garrett Gerthy. Garrett Gerthy, the fans love him. At least the jerky fans. Yeah. Double G craft jerky. Been selling well within the disc golf community and even outside of it. Creeping right up to that OB line and actually going to finish left out of bounds. From Ronert Park, California, James Proctor. Yeah, super fast ground play this week. Not a whole lot of rain here recently. So lots of big skips, and once once you get done skipping, you've got a chance to roll a little bit as well. For sure, and Tailwind kind of stabling some stuff out early. And I think with the foot traffic, it's it's made everything just a little harder. So Proctor taking the safe side to the right. Makes his upshot a little longer, but no OB stroke. From Duncan, South Carolina, Evan Scott. Evan won a few weeks ago at the Zoo Town Open Silver event in Missoula, Montana. And you see the very Macbeth style run up. A great showing for him out there in Missoula. Led pretty much all the way through. Emerson Keith. See, he's able to land in the middle of the fairway. Emerson, another pretty smooth thrower, but still has lots of power. He's had a pretty solid season. We saw him a little injured at Music City and making a good push at Jonesboro. He ended up winning the OTB Open earlier this season in Stockton, California. And with shots like that, easy to see why. Yeah, that was his first Disc Golf Pro Tour Elite Series win. And looking to make a push for a second one today. He's got lots of stroke to make to make up on Ricky, though. Proctor from 300, 320 away. No problem. Into the bullseye. Easy start for his day. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, inside bullseye. Evan 
Evans second, stabling out pretty early. Does clear the out of bounds, but he's going to be somewhere in circle two. Emerson with a nice shot, very well distance controlled there, able to drop it just inside circle one. Garrett going to be looking to get up and down for par here. Both of them finding middle of C1. Evan with the stepper, finds lots of chains, but left side going to chain out. Good stick by Emerson Keith. Yeah, these baskets do seem to like good pace on your putt, but you have to hit in the middle. A little bit of wind here. Overall, this was the calmest day we had, although still some gusts. Garrett able to find that center mass. And Proctor the easy yeah. tap. So we're going to see three birdies and a par. I'm sorry, Girthy with a with his par cleanup. Hole two, 318 feet as a par three. Pretty much net straight. Double Mando to contend with early. And then another gap, middle of the fairway. Basket is elevated. In general, players are just going to take a putter or mid and uh, try to spin it smooth. Yeah, pretty fairly straightforward shot. Like you said, you do want to fade just slightly to the left as James has done right here. Can't really draw it up much better than that. Flat release gets it to drift to the right and then one skip right about 50 feet away to finish at two feet away. Emerson going to try to draw up that same line here. Tracks it around a couple trees, but finds back edge of circle one. Nicely done. Just as you noted in the intro, Garrett going to that color glow rock three. Also hit that line nicely. Looking for some fade, but catches a tree instead and gets a little anti-roll. Going to put him in circle two, it looks like. Evan fading out early. We'll have a look from over there, also in circle two. Yeah, a bit high and inside on the release from him, but able to get down the fairway. Yeah. Garrett looks like he's got a high hyzer putt here. No step this time from Evan. Able to find chains. Emerson also with the knockdown. Yeah, easy to go a bit long on this hole, trying to hit that gap, but not too long there. Able to go two for two to start. Have another very birdieable hole coming up in hole three. Garrett with a good par save on one, gonna wanna get the two here, but able to also clean up another par. And if Proctor keeps this up, uh, we're in for a special day. Definitely so. Hole three, 408 foot par three. Pretty much pick your choice, fairway or mid-range if you have the power. You really want to hug that right side tree line and then let your disc just softly finish to the left. Anything that you don't stand up has a big tendency to skip down the hill to the left of the basket up here. As noted, Proctor never really got that quite right of the basket, therefore tracked down that hill. A 
I like the drift Emerson is getting. He'll want this to get back to Ed so that it can run to the left. And that ought to do it. Let's take another look at that. Emerson lined that one up perfectly, drawing it over to the right to avoid that hill on the left side. And has that speed dialed in nicely as well. He's going to be one step outside of the bullseye looking at another birdie. I like the pace on this. Once again, going to have to get back to edge so that it'll run. And Evan finding that about 38 foot mark once again. Good opportunity for Garrett's first birdie here. We're going T-bird, but has it a bit low. And therefore gonna have to go to his Sonic. Yikes, a lot of changes that was starting the hyzer back in, but the kick out. Yeah, that looked like a pretty good putt. Gonna end up with his par, as will Evan Scott, who's just gonna barely miss high on that. Well committed, though. Keith, a real quick three for three start. Otherwise, par cleanups are coming. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go, Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more. Gotta Go, Gotta Throw.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in-store, get what you need for the game you love. Gotta go, gotta throw.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. Hole four, a par four at 746 feet. Gotta get out the gap and then turn right for quite a long ways. This cluster of three trees is the ideal landing zone or possibly a little past that. And then a series of straight stacked gaps leading to this basket and a little bit of a bowl. Very challenging hole, hard to set up your second shot with your first one. Yeah, like you said, somewhere around those three trees or ideally past them is gonna be your best landing zone. And have to control a big turnover shot. Emerson and Keith getting to a pretty good spot. Uh, gonna have pretty straight look down the fairway, not really much hyzer or much turnover, I think. Proctor a little earlier than Emerson was. Still potentially in position, but some more work to do as he has to make another gap out of that cluster of three. Evan wider and higher, and he's going to catch some lettuce and get dropped down yeah, left side the of the fairway. Grass, but pretty much takes him out of birdie position. Very hard to hit the two gaps that you have to hit from that far back. And Garrett, you see the very exaggerated body language as he throws a sky ante up to a pretty solid spot. Looks, looks like he should have mid range, probably that rock three once again on a turnover shot. You see Evan here, gonna have to keep this shot low to miss these branches, but he's pulled it over to the right of the gap. Might still be in some trouble, hard to get up and down from there. For sure, this stuff is thick once you're off the fairway. Proctor finding a similar spot as he's unable to hit the gap correctly. I think it's notable that a lot of players on tour are able to throw that 475, 500 on hyzer. But as soon as we don't align the landing zone with the gap, 
It increases Definitely the difficulty so of landing there substantially. Garrett does seem to go with that mid-range. Pulls it a little bit, but able to get through. Gonna have his first birdie look of the round. And a little frustrated walk off from Emerson as he pulls his forehand into the left side. Evan and James going to look at the footing real quick. Appears to be good. This is 200 feet or so, yeah, but hard to get any to legs get into the, the shot. turnover that he wanted to get on that either. Really only advances about 60 feet. James in some trouble also. Going to go to a similar spot. You can run the putt from where they're at. There's not too much trouble of going super long, uh, but not in a good spot. Maybe not quite circle two yet. No, they both look to be closer to 100 than circle two. Evan going to take a poke at it nonetheless, but will fade out early. This did play as the third hardest hole on the course today. Averaging at a 3.95, just barely under par. And Garrett will be one yeah, of those that's birdies. that's a good birdie to get to get your round going. You know, you want to come away with one, if not two or three of those first three, like Emerson did. Uh, but to get four after not getting those definitely can give you a momentum boost. Yeah, for sure. This this is a course that everyone is attacking every hole until there's a compelling reason not to. You see James going to clean up his bogey Man. along with Evan. Emerson able to drop in his first par of the round, but still sitting at three under. Moves us into hole five, the newest hole of the Black Bear course. A uh, little soft putter shot or mid-range. Uh, you might see some forehand flex shots with a mid-range or possibly fairway driver. Garrett likes to disc down on his mids or speed down on his mids rather than throw putters, but that one gets a little away from him there. Yeah, a little too swoopy. We've seen this be a pretty successful shape. The slow disc forehand, but Emerson cannot quite find that lane correctly. Proctor with a hyzer release this is going to have to hurry left, get some help from a branch. And he's going to be in circle too, but who knows what kind of stance there is in that bush. Evan from South Carolina definitely knows some short little wooded holes and he does look pretty comfortable with that swing right there. Uh-oh, maybe a little bit too much speed. I think he might be in a good spot as far as being underneath that cedar goes where he'll be able to straddle out to the left and have a little bit of room. Oh yeah, He's also a little guy, he'll be able to fit in that crevice, no trouble. Garrett looking to give his birdie right back. Not able to really scramble well right there. And uh, now going to be up and down to get a bogey. Emerson from a funny angle, forced to completely lay up with the backhand slow spin. And look at this tricky angle from Proctor. Yeah, maybe trying to give that a cheeky little bid there, trying to give it the height without much speed. And a good swing straight up for Evan, basically. Yeah, from a knee to an elevated basket. Pretty awkward stance there, but able to convert. Emerson able to get up and down for his par. Proctor going to do the same. Garrett will tap in a, 
upcoming bogey. Unfortunately, yeah, having lots to of give pars and birdies on this on one. Fifty percent par, forty-one percent birdie. I think a nice little change of pace for the course. Hole six, 695 feet as a par four. Got to go pretty straight, about 360 or so to set up a second shot, which is going to just keep bending right through a narrow corridor of young trees and a lot of thick underbrush everywhere that is not fairway. Yeah, played as the hardest hole on the course the first two days. And our players showed you why a little bit in both cases. Evan Scott gets a pretty good shot out there. That's not necessarily far enough to go for an easy birdie or the ideal birdie. None of the birdies on this hole are easy. Um, but you'd like to be a little bit farther to really <laughs> attack. I do like that he kept the shot low. I think he went fairway driver to ensure that he got something out of it but kept it low so that his fade wasn't aggressive Proctor kind of doing the same a thing little for bit the ground farther. Uh, still not quite the ideal spot yet but may have a little better angle as far as a flex shot in there and Garrett also going to play the fairway slow drift to the right this is going to unwind and turn catch cam Dave around yeah, he, he might actually be pointed straight down the gap. From Garrett That's there. a huge pull. Turns it over nicely and catches the fade that you need to not be too far right. Hopefully he'll be looking straight down that gap and not have anything too crazy going on. You don't see drives like that often on this hole. Emerson with the errant first, but does have a pretty good swing for his forehand. Breaks in front of the backside trees and should have a third shot. Evan goes buzz and hits the gap very successfully. Yeah, gets himself I guess he threw it to just the angle so. that he wanted to. Able to attack that pretty well. James going to go with something a bit they're pretty similar. Just catches something late on the left side, but as you heard him say, he'll take it as anybody else would also. He's going to have a circle two look for birdie. Yeah, and it looks like Garrett did push a little bit too far. Tried to throw a hyzer in there, but should have gotten far enough to get up and down for par. Emerson a little high and floaty on his forehand third. We'll have a putt to try to save par. Here's Proctor for his bird. And if I'm not mistaken, hey, he got nubbed on this very same hole say yesterday. The same thing. Similar result this there. time. Garrett with his chance. Just a little bit high, and we still have one more opportunity for birdie on a hole that only had 14 today. Played as the second hardest rather than the first. And knew it out of his hand that that one wasn't going in. Yeah, that headwind coming down the corridor proving difficult for all three of those guys. Emerson from full extension floats it right. He, he will have to settle for a bogey. Evan now with a bit of a tester for his par comeback and is going to end up leaving that low to also settle for a bogey. Going to put him back to even. Yeah, that's going to be a frustrating three putt, kind of a giveaway of a stroke. Only two and holes on the, on the for course Emerson averaged Keith. over par today. But both pretty far over pars. This one was a 4.31 on 
as the second hardest on the course. Switching with hole 14, which has played as the second hardest. I just think the plastic is very premium. It's a high quality material. The way the disc feels in my hand. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. The quality is better than any other company out there. Again, just consistent plastic. It's something I can consistently trust on every single throw. There's so many discs to choose from, and I guarantee if you tried every disc in the lineup, you're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. It's extremely high quality. You can only say so much, but they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Introducing the F9, Prodigy's most understable fairway driver. The F9 is designed for beginners and lower arm speeds to get maximum distance, full flex flights, and effortless hyzer flips. The F9, coming soon to prodigydisc.com. Hole 7, 390 foot par 3. Might play a little bit downhill, and the, the low branches we just passed on the left side make this gap a little bit smaller than it looks from the tee. Not much wind going on today, so uh, rip a fairway or maybe even a mid-range down the right side. And uh, don't let it finish too much. Proctor has too much arm speed and is going to juice it long into a cedar. Really great line, just didn't catch up quickly enough. Double G, gonna play a little bit more flex. And if this will hyzer in time, as it does, he will also be inside the circle. Well executed, just behind that little mound. I think right now we're three for three on players throwing the same disc that they had on hole three. Yeah, pretty Both of these just play almost identical. Very similar shot. This one is definitely more visually feet. appealing. I like the shape or just the way that this looks looking down the fairway. Got your big rock and the red mulch. The mound behind it all just lines up nicely. Emerson's high floaty shot to the left means he's got to throw another forehand approach. And should be a credible attempt to get a par out of that. James going to be looking for the birdie from a knee. And just in circle two, not quite able to convert. Evan with another straddle putt. And who is able to connect on the left side there? His scorecard is looking quite colorful down there. Yeah, it's a doggone Christmas tree right now. Garrett up and over the mound. And front cage. Comeback putt for par from Emerson there. 48% par and birdie on this hole. Not much trouble to get into, so not many bogeys. There were a few, though. You can. You have to yeah, the woods shake on the pretty right badly get pretty or three putt, I, I, get I reckon. Kicked in there. Not this year, but I have Sounds been. Like I have know. been in there previously. <laughs> Hole eight, eleven, eleven, par five. An initial water carry. Got to clear that and stay safe. Otherwise, you go to a drop zone that's pretty punishing. Attack on your second shot. A good shot can get you within about three hundred feet, maybe a little closer to this basket that's perched on a hill. The entire wood line to the right is inconvenient but safe. Yeah, really don't have to go for too much off of this tee shot. Just have to land in bounds so you don't go to that drop zone. As you see, Evan playing very safe over here to the right side. Does hyzer back just in front of that tall grass. Yeah, absolutely need some practice rounds to figure out your visual layout. And then Evan clearly knows his disc, plays the Anheuser into a little baby finish. 
Proctor playing more Heiser flip, trying to push it to, to that back wall before it starts to fade, but this is heading towards the left side. And that's trouble, Nathan. Yeah, never looked right enough out of the hand, especially with how fast this grass is skipping this week. This, however, does have some right movement on it and lots of speed also. He is gonna end up finding that tall grass and weeds over there. I think he stayed out of the trees, uh, but about four foot tall grass over there. And Emerson, high hyzer flip. I like this a little more than James's. Seems like it's gonna spike in rather than skipping left. And that's now what it does. Now from way back here, Proctor again tracking to the left. Oh no, and yeah, you can tell that he is not a fan either. Gonna be throwing OB twice now. Will get distance on that one. Uh, but throwing five and not really in a good spot to attack the basket. Evan again playing pretty safe off to the right side. The, uh, the gap through which you could see the basket briefly is a little bit of a false front, I think. Difficult to get your height and ability to stick on that hill. Yeah, unless you're going with the sidearm or lefty backhand. Garrett with a missile out of the thistles, gets himself to about 280 away. <laughs> Very well thrown shot from a tough spot. Yeah, what a shot. And probably got far enough left that he's going to be able to throw like a baby Anheuser rather than a big turnover shot. Keith, this is tracking off to the left. May even put himself behind that tree. Does stay safe. But uh, that needed to be on Anheuser when he was cutting the corner. I imagine James going to try to do everything he can to reach this basket. This is going to be a big high Anheuser. Ooh, tough roller. read, Nathan. Going to go <laughs> roller. And into that corner tree that I noted just after Evan's second shot. So he'll be inside 200, but throwing his sixth from there. Good swing from Evan. If this gets a straight skip, it's solid. Uh, instead, he's going to kind of be in no man's land over there. Difficult to run the putt, even from C2, with the way the slope runs away from his uh, finishing angle. Yeah, and such an awkward stance. Your left foot is so much farther down than your right. Very awkward. Difficult to get any type of regulated swing. And Emerson getting over the culvert that's kind of the left side of circle one. That is safe. And Garrett actually going to have to do more steep Anheuser than we anticipated. But with that, Rock is successful. James getting caught up in that tree but able to get up and down now. He'll be sitting there for a seven. Double bogey on this par five. Evan Scott with the... Heroic chance for birdie. And funny little stance here from Double G. Just using his arm to try to poke it up there. Both of those guys going to have to settle for five after a pretty well-played hole up to that point. Yeah, that was actually Emerson over there on the left. Double G able to card his birdie here, get himself under par. Yeah, my bad, guys. I know who you are. You're just wearing similar shirts, and we're in the shul. Kevin yeah, Scott, I'm sure he was wanting that birdie as well, but able to clean up that par. Also one under. With the seven, James is now over par after the pretty... Good start to the round. Moves us into hole nine. It did it. It is the easiest hole on the course three days in a row. 406 foot, gotta carry the water for 360, 370 maybe. Uh, back 
Can Heisers let the wind push it to the left? Try to card yourself a birdie. Hit something hard. Kick right. Had a pretty rowdy crowd out there cheering anything that was in bounds and especially things that were potentially ace running. I tricked him a little bit with my shot. I had three, well, Chris Clemens on my card threw a lefty forehand, so three pretty much righty shots into the green. They all caught that wind stream, had the crowd cheering. But they didn't know what to do with that lefty shot. They weren't quite sure if it was going to be good or not. <laughs> Emerson, this is over Heiser. Is he going to get in bounds? Not quite. That line drawn a little over the brush. Wow, and big unforced error on that one. Something you absolutely cannot do. You go to a drop zone, it's not really a great opportunity to save the par. And it's a long walk around to that to ponder your mistakes ask me how I know Proctor going to line up the backhand hyzer as well ensure he gives it plenty of height and push forward before it starts swinging good correction from his card mates and a filter through the backside woods yeah just outside the bullseye it looks like there and as you see here is that drop zone Looks like Emerson might try to line up a forehand bid here. Gonna give it the height. You can do so fairly safely as you're diving into the hillside. So 71% of the field birdied this hole the first two days. The, the field stopped messing around today. 77% of the field able to card the birdie. Evan Scott, one of them, puts himself two down. I feel like there's a lot shorter holes that don't even come close to three quarters of the field getting them. Absolutely so. This still surprises me that that many people got it every single day. I know it's wide open and all, but. And our that's card, good. pretty much following that average as three players gonna convert for birdie. Emerson now for his bogey cleanup. And nobody from this chase card really lighting the world on fire thus far. Through nine holes, a couple of twos, a one, and an even. So a lot of a lot of work to do to make up. Everybody's still hanging into, you know, decent cash spots. A couple guys in the top ten, but need to score on this very attackable back nine. Yeah, that's what we've seen so far, and absolutely gonna have to do that here to keep in a cash spot or try to maintain some top ten spots or work yourself back in there. Thank you guys for tuning in to our third round front nine coverage here on Gatekeeper Media. We've got nine final holes left for you guys before we wrap up for a little bit. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.